Hi, this is Mary from The Daily Sew. In the last video, we took in the t-shirt, which really has helped with the overall fit and look of it. But now the shirt is just a little too long and I want to take some length off of it to shorten it. Taking length off a t-shirt can be as easy as taking a pair of scissors and just cutting across. Done, finished. It's not gonna unravel. It will roll, the t-shirt fabric will roll, but you could basically leave it at that. However, what if this is a shirt you wanna wear to work? Um, assuming that you wouldn't wear cutoffs to work. Or, um, a nicer knit shirt, a knit dress, a polo shirt, even a pair of knit pants, not the Lycra spandex tights, but a pair of knit pants that you want to hem. Well, you're going to want to mimic this um, original hem. And I'm going to show you how to do that in this video using a basic sewing machine. I'm going to show you the stitch to use, the adjustments you need to make to the stitch so that it stretches with the fabric. And I have a little tip or trick um, so that when you sew the hem, the knit fabric doesn't get wavy like knit fabrics will do when you sew them. So if you're ready, let's go. All right, the first thing you're gonna need is a t-shirt that's a little too long for you, a ruler, something to mark with, something to mark fabric with, scissors, pins, thread to match your t-shirt, and knit needles. What I mean by knit needles are needles that are made for knit fabrics. And they will say jersey, or they might say stretch, or they might say jersey ballpoint. But, and then, the, but that's the type you need. And then you gotta look at the size. If you have a regular weight t-shirt fabric, you're gonna use a size 80. You can see that on the bottom there. And if you have a lightweight t-shirt fabric, like a tissue weight t-shirt fabric, you're gonna use a size 70. Then there are some other things you might want to use for hemming a t-shirt, and that's this knit and stable tape. It's a fusible tape or this wash away tape. One or the other will work, although these are optional. And both of these you can pick up at a local big box fabric store. So first thing you want to do is try the t-shirt on. Try it on in front of a mirror and fold it up until you get it to um, where you like it, how short you would like to see it on you. Then you can kind of, um, just on one side or the other, or in one place, go ahead and measure it if you have a ruler with you, and then take note of how much that length was that you folded up. If you don't have a ruler with you, just fold up the fabric and press against your body, and you can make a crease that you can measure later, or, of course, you can pin it in place. Now, you don't have to do this all the way around, just in a, one spot will be fine. Then when you get to your table, turn your t-shirt right side, I mean inside out, and line up that bottom edge as best you can. If you have side seams, line up those two so everything is nice and flat. And this takes a while, so just be patient. Every time you move something, something else seems to move in the wrong direction. So just get it nice and flat, as flat as you can. Lining up the bottom helps too. And then when you get it flat, you'll want to pin the two, the opening together, the two sides together so that it stays together. Just across the bottom is good. Now I measured up three inches. I want to shorten my t-shirt three inches, but I'm not going to cut off three inches because remember I need a seam allowance and I'm going to use a one inch seam allowance. So I'm going to measure up two inches and cut off the two inches. And that way I still have one inch to fold up and hem. If you're only shortening your shirt one inch, you could cut off nothing or you could just make a shorter hem if you want to, but I'm gonna use a one inch hem on this. My ruler is two inches wide, so I just did it sideways to measure up my two inches and you wanna mark with something that comes off a of fabric. Now I'm gonna cut both layers at the same time because I have it pinned together, but if you need to or want to, you can just cut one layer at a time. I'm always for easy, well, usually for easy stuff. Then just cut them off. And because it was pinned, you could move that t-shirt as one. Now we're going to measure it up. How much you, uh, your seam allowance, how much you left for your seam allowance. I did an inch. So I measure up an inch. I'm going to start in the center front or the center back, not on the side seams, because my t-shirt has a shape to it, which means the circumference at the hem is much larger than the circumference that I'm folding it up to. If you have a very boxy t-shirt, this isn't gonna be a problem. You have the same circumference at the hem as whatever you're folding it up to. 
Just go around and pin it. And when you get to the side, if you have a shaped T-shirt, and even if you have a boxy one, go ahead and line the side seams up with each other. If you have a shaped T-shirt, you're going to have some extra fabric here, and it kind of puddles up. Don't worry about that. Just fold it up and then give it a nice press. And if you don't have plastic heads on your pins, you can iron over your pins. And there where the extra bulk is, you just iron it down. It'll flatten itself out and it's all good. Okay, make sure your t-shirt is pinned up all the way around and pressed. And next I'm gonna show you um, some different ways we can hem this. So first way we could use is a, a fusible knit and stable tape. It um, irons on at the hem. Or we can use this wash away wonder tape, which is actually like a two-sided tape and will stick the hem to the t-shirt and we sew it. And of course we don't have to use either, but I'm gonna show you all three ways. First, um, why would you wanna use it? Well, it goes in between the t-shirt and the hem there and it kind of holds the fabric together. It gives it some stability. And that way, when you go along and sew, the knit fabric has a tendency to stretch, which is all why we all like it, why everyone likes to wear it. But when it stretches under the machine, the presser foot, it will get wavy. So a stabilizer tape is really helpful, either one. Now, either one of these you can pick up at um, like a Joann's or some big box type of fabric store. So the first one I have is the Wash Away Wonder Tape and it comes a quarter inch wide. I wish it came a little bit wider, but it'll work. And it's a double-sided tape and you're gonna unfold your, take your pins out, unfold your t-shirt so that your hem is revealed there and stick the double-sided tape across the cut edge, the edge you cut. Luckily, it's repositionable, but because it is so narrow, you do want it right up against the edge there, or, you know, within a hair. Then go ahead and peel off the paper side of the double-sided tape, and you can still see that the tape is there, and then fold it up on your crease and pat it down. Then you're going to sew it. They're stuck together there. Again, it's repositionable if you need to. And um, you're gonna sew it, it's all stuck together, no pins required. And then when you toss it into the wash, it will wash away. Then our other uh, stabilizing tape, hem helper, is this knit and stable tape. Mine has, a, it is an inch wide. So I don't have to cut it because I made an inch wide seam allowance, but you could, um, of course, make it narrower by cutting it horizontally as narrow as you need it now it's fusible and so it has a rough side that's the glue and you're going to fuse it onto the hem side and not the t-shirt so just fuse it on per the instructions and try not to run over your crease because you still need that crease to show you where to fold it up then it's stuck onto that hem it's nice and stable and you'll pin it down in place now we're going to pin it onto the top side of the t-shirt and that is because almost always the stitch that comes from the needle along the top here on the top side always looks better than the stitch that comes from the bobbin or the thread that comes from the bobbin. So we're going to do it on the top side. Now in our last sample, you're just going to pin it up. I'm going to pin it up and just sew it as it is in case you prefer not to use either of those stabilizer tapes. Now on the machine, we're going to set up our machine for a zigzag stitch. And a regular zigzag stitch, you know what that looks like. But what we want is a narrow and long zigzag stitch. One, because it looks more like a straight stitch from far away. And two, it doesn't stretch out the knit fabric as much. So I'll show you what I mean. There's a regular stitch on the left and the narrow long stitch on the right. And around your hem, that'll look like a straight stitch from far away. So remember to set up your machine, the zigzag stitch for knit fabrics. You want the width about one millimeter, I mean, yeah, millimeter wide, and the length about 2.5 millimeters long. So long and narrow. A regular one looks like that. And a long, narrow zigzag stitch looks more like a line. 
So let's go over there are different samples. This is the Wonder Tape. But remember, it's right up at the edge there, and I have a one inch seam allowance. So I'm gonna put my fabric edge at like seven eighths, somewhere like that, so I can catch the top edge and sew through the tape. Sometimes, most times with knits, you want to stop every once in a while with the needle down and push the top layer of fabric back to the back. But with the Wonder Tape, I didn't need to do that so much because the tape held both layers tight together. So that's what the Wonder Tape looks like. The Knit and Stable Tape. Let's try this. Don't run over your pins, it weakens the stitch. And again, with this, you're gonna want to lift up the presser foot and kind of push back that top layer of fabric because the presser foot will push that top layer of fabric toward you and you just want to kind of gently push it back where it belongs. All right, and there's the knit stable. It's got a little puckery, but if you pressed it when you're done sewing it, it'll lie out nice and flat. Now let's use the one where I've used no stabilizer. Apparently I've used no pins either. But again, this one you definitely need to stop every once in a while and just kind of scoot that fabric, that top layer of fabric back away from you. All right, and there is the no stabilizer and you can see it's a lot wavier. Now again, a good pressing when you're done will take a, some of that out, but uh, I'm going with the Wonder Tape because I see no waviness and it stables pretty good too. And the no stabilizer works. I've, this is the first time I've ever used the stabilizers, so I've always never used it. Never had a problem, but I did like how the Wonder Tape turned out. So yes, it's not a straight stitch, but if you have matching thread, matching your t-shirt, you really don't notice it really blends in. It's straight enough. So go ahead and prepare your t-shirt with whatever method you're gonna use. Either um, put up the Wonder Tape all the way around on the hem. And remember, get it close to the edge and you might have to cut little pieces. And then or then fuse the knit and stable tape to the hem or go ahead and just pin up the t-shirt and use neither. All three will work. You get to choose. Okay, I just wanna show you how to deal with this side seam here where you have extra fabric. If you have a shape, a t-shirt with some shape to it, you're gonna have a little extra fabric there on the side. So I'm just going to cut some smallish pieces of tape and lay it across there. And this tape, as is the fusible kind, is thin. And so if it needs to double up, it's not gonna cause a big bulky wrinkle underneath uh, your shirt. So don't worry about that. Just put it on, line up. If you have a side seam, line that up and lay it in place. Reposition it all you need, just lay it down. The wrinkle will be fine. It won't show on the right side of the shirt. And you don't have to put tape on every single millimeter there, you can just put it where you need to. You could leave the wrinkle open if you, you know, non-tape, it'll all work. Just get it down nice and smooth. You won't have this problem if you have a boxy shirt or on the center, the back and the front of the shirt. Now we're gonna sew it up. Remember, we're gonna sew on the right side of the t-shirt. Um, you do wanna take a couple stitches backward at the beginning. And I always start at a side seam where it's not so noticeable just in case it's a little bulky. When you're done sewing, give your t-shirt a final pressing. You always get to press your stitches. It sets them in place. And then you're ready to put it on. And you have the before where it's long and the after where it's where I want it. Well, I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments below and I'll be sure to reply. And if you like this video and others we put out, be sure to hit the subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.